Hello everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week, uh, I got to see some work that a friend of mine is doing. Um, he did some modeling in Rhino and then rendered it in V-Ray. And it was a fine image. It was impressive. But what worried me was that the render time that V-Ray reported in that little banner they put at the bottom was two and a half hours. That's well, It was two hours and 40 minutes. And, you know... What worries me is that there are a lot of techniques in Studio Max and in all 3D programs for reducing your render time. And they're important to know about. Because if you can lower your render time, you get to see the change that you invoked in your scene that much faster. You get to learn that much faster. If you can lower your render time every time by 50%, that's 50% time that you could be spending refining your scene some more. That's 50% of that time you could spend uh, sleeping. That's that's 50% time you could spend watching my Monday movies. So in, in the interest of increasing viewership, I'm going to teach you some of these techniques for speeding up your renders uh, and getting more out of 3D Studio Max. Now this is the scene right here, you're looking at it. Um, this took 25 seconds to render. I'm using Mental Ray and an area light and lots of uh, glossy objects in here, so that's why we managed to get 25 seconds uh, on here. But keep in mind that the things that I talk about extend to all platforms uh, and they extend to all rendering engines. I mean, they're called different things across the board, right? Radiosity and Final Gather and uh, Global Illumination, Area Lights, Point Lights, it's all terminology. But the concepts remain the same and so I'm going to try to frame this movie and the next one in terms of concepts. So. We're going to be going over four techniques today. The first one is going to be resolution and the impact that resolution has on your final renders. Rendering with regions, areas in uh, 3D Studio Max. Altering the shadows of your lights in order to improve rendering times. And then finally, we're going to take a look at the big kahuna, altering the sampling of your renders in order to speed things up. So let's take a look at number one, changing your resolution. I'm going to open my render setup panel and for mental ray under the common tab it's right down here output size right now it's 640 by 480 and in real life that's pretty big I mean I, I don't care how big your monitor is uh, this is a very big test render it doesn't have to be this large so let's go ahead and bring it down to um, I don't know 450 450 by 338 and let's see the impact that has from 25 seconds. I'm betting it's going to be under 20. Okay, so without too much of a visible change in, in quality, we managed to get a 25 second render down to 19 seconds. So already we've saved, uh, you know, about 25% in this render. Awesome. And it's just a little bit smaller. So the, the underlying principle here is less pixels rendered, less render time. Don't render things you don't have to. Always hide things, always remove things from the scene if they don't need to be rendered as part of, as part of your, you know, your, your guess and check process here. So let's take a look at another variant on that which is using areas to render, which is right up here. Let me make sure that's in your viewable area, right here. So right now we're rendering the view which says everything in the scene gets rendered, everything on, in, this, in this frame. But what if I only had a localized change? What if I wanted to change the color of this box? Let's do that. Let's change that color. So I'm going to open my material editor. And uh, I've got the green selected right here. It's a physics phenomenon material. And I'm going to select diffuse. I'm going to change it from green to, um, to yellow. Kind of a goldish yellow. OK. And I mean, if you look at this scene critically, you have to ask yourself, how much of an impact is this going to have? Well, it's going to change all these pixels right here. It's going to change the reflection in this red ball. Uh, it's going to change the reflection out here on the cylinder. And it's going to change the reflection on the floor. So I can go to my uh, region selection. I'll select a little bit of the red ball right here. I'll select a little bit of the blue cylinder. And a little bit underneath. And now, when I re-render, it'll just render this area. How's that for an improvement? So we just rendered the area we needed. We didn't render anything else outside. 
uh, of this area. Everything blends together very well because we didn't make any large sweeping changes, right? We didn't change the lighting. We didn't change the underlying material on the floor. And our render time was, what, four seconds, five seconds? So you're saving a ton of time by telling Mental Ray, by telling your renderer, only take this area, this area that I changed. So this is a very powerful technique. Let's look at a few others. So the next up is this shadow, uh, shadow casting from this area light. It's, um, it's a little too high. So let's take a look at the area light samples and see if we can reduce them. I'm going to select my disk light and under the modify panel I'm going to scroll down to shape area shadows and right off the bat I can tell we're using way too high of a sampling we're using 64 samples it's a little bit too much for a test render especially because we have final gather on so I'm going to turn this down to um, oh gosh uh, I guess we could use 8 it's going to be a little grainy but it's going to save us uh, even more in terms of render time. Let's take a render. Much better. This is a world apart from what it used to be. We are now down to 7 seconds. So we went from 25 seconds to 19 seconds by having a smaller rendering area. And then we went to 7 seconds by lowering the lighting samples. Now if I zoom in, it's kind of mm, it's kind of grainy, it doesn't look that great, but at 100% resolution, you can barely tell. You can barely tell that I made that change, and I can always turn it back up when I'm ready to, to deliver this to the client. So, we are now down to seven seconds, and from there, without, you know, we barely changed the quality. The most impactful change we made was was this graininess out here with the with the light casting. The final change that we have at our disposal, the most important, is changing the sampling. And this is something, again, that's universal to all engines. If I open my render setup panel, and under Mental Ray, if I go to Renderer, here are the samples per pixel. This tells Mental Ray how many, how many checks per pixel to take in order to determine, like, for example, the color. So it's set to a maximum of four samples per pixel and a minimum of one-fourth for areas that have low contrast like out here on the very top surface of this box. But this is just a test render. I don't care if it's grainy. So I can turn it down to, for example, 1 4th and 1 16th. And now let's take another render and see what this looks like. Whoa. So it's a noticeable hit to the quality, right? But look at the render time. That took two seconds just two seconds and I still have final gather on now yeah we lost a lot of quality out here on the outside of, uh, of this light when you turn the maximum samples down to less than one you lose the ability to to really anti-alias so it gets very grainy but the ground plane looks just fine it barely changed at all so for a test render this looks spectacular and it takes you know, one-tenth of the original time uh, that our last render took. So I encourage you to work this into your own workflow, whether you're using 3D Studio Max and Mental Ray, if you're using Studio Max and the Ray Traced Engine, if you're using V-Ray or Brazil or anything. All of these tools are universal in lowering your render time so that you're not reliant on advances in, in hardware to make your pipeline faster. Be sure to tune in again next week. We'll have part two of reducing your render times in 3D Studio Max. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday movie. You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads on my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.